In early 2001, several months before 9-11, the State Department commissioned a follow-up study of 60 Mexicans brought to the US through the International Visitors Program. Here is a paragraph from that report summarizing um, what the visitors had to say about the difference between the Americans they met during their visit and those that they were familiar with from the screen. Quote, people who watch US television shows, attend Hollywood movies, and listen to pop music can't help but believe that we are a nation in which we have sex with strangers regularly, where we wander the streets well armed and prepared to shoot our neighbors at any provocation, and where the lifestyle to which we aspire is one of decadent cocaine snorting sybarites. This is not an accurate description of the US, the report continues, <laughs> nor is it very attractive to many people around the world. The Mexican visitors, it concluded, were very clear that their images of America shaped by the commercial media were inaccurate and distorted and gave them a negative perception of the United States. That's Mexico before 9-11. This summary captures the most obvious aspects of the problem. And I don't want to belabor the point by giving you a slew of, well, actually I do, but I'm not going to belabor the point by giving you a slew of examples. But I do want to make a couple of observations based on what I heard in my interviews around the world. The first has to do with the globally popular but distinctively American TV genre that I call the urban singles comedy. The quintessential example, of course, is Friends, which ran on NBC from 1994 to 2004. Notable for focusing not on a family or a workplace, but on the private lives of young and unattached men and women, Friends is old hat to Americans, but not to the rest of the world. According to the producer, Warner Brothers, Friends has been telecast in 109 countries over 50,000 times. And this is not counting the millions of times it continues to be pirated and illegally downloaded. <clears throat> now, the ur urban singles comedy has changed over time, becoming raunchier and more cynical with Sex and the City, also a huge global hit. And now Girls, not yet one, <clears throat> as far as I know. The obvious appeal of these shows is titillation. But a less obvious appeal, one that I learned about in my travels, is their portrayal of extreme personal freedom being enjoyed by individuals with no visible ties to family, faith, or community. Now, this can be an alluring picture if you're an unmarried Egyptian or Indian or Nigerian still living with your extended family and subject to their many demands. But it can also be disturbing. When Ambassador Edward Jagirian took a fact-finding tour about America's image in the wake of 9-11, he met a Syrian teacher who asked him, not jokingly, whether friends represented a typical American family. 